Hey everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. A team of astronomers from the UK has discovered what may be the tiny precursors of planets orbiting a nearby star. According to the most accepted model, dust and gas left over from the formation of a star gather into clumps, which over the course of millions of years eventually become astronomical objects like planets and moons. Astronomers from the University of St. Andrews and the University of Manchester discovered a belt of pebbles orbiting the star DG Tauri, which is located relatively nearby at a distance of 450 light years. DG Tauri is a fairly young star, and the pebbles are just what we would expect to see in a solar system still in the early stages of formation. Though the model of planet formation I describe has been widely accepted for some time, DG Tauri is the first star system to have been observed at this particular stage of formation. Several of the astronomers on this team are involved in similar projects, studying young stars to look for evidence of forming planets. Hopefully, we'll get to see more solar systems being born in the future. Next up, not one, but two encouraging new stories from the field of HIV research. First, scientists at the University of Missouri have created the most complete model yet of the HIV capsid protein. These proteins form a shell inside HIV that protects the virus's genome. Recognizing this protein and understanding how it works and how to destabilize or destroy it could provide researchers with a powerful weapon with which to combat HIV infection. Second, a new HIV vaccine regimen is showing promise in non-human primates. The vaccine, being developed at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, consists of two steps an adenovirus vaccine that primes the immune system, then an HIV envelope protein to boost the immune response. The vaccine has been shown to be effective in protecting 50% of non-human primates tested against simian immunodeficiency virus, or SIV, which is very similar to HIV. A 50% success rate might not sound that promising, but given how notoriously difficult the development of an HIV vaccine has been, these results are very encouraging. And finally, a new study finds that electrical nerve stimulation can reverse certain effects of spinal cord injuries. Researchers at the University of Sydney administered 30 minutes of electrical stimulation of the peripheral nerves, the nerves below the point of injury that run to the limbs, to spinal cord injury patients. The electrical stimulation was given five days a week for six weeks. After six weeks, the stimulated nerves showed better function and responded to the electrical stimulation more like those of uninjured patients. The researchers hope this study will encourage doctors and therapists to incorporate peripheral nerve stimulation into rehabilitation programs for spinal cord injury patients. If these results are any indication, maintaining peripheral nerve function is essential to preventing long-term deterioration of nerves and muscles and improving the lives of the approximately 250,000 people living with spinal cord injuries in the United States alone. Astronomers discover pebbles that are destined to become planets orbiting a nearby star. Researchers learn more about the structure of HIV and develop a promising vaccine against the virus. And scientists discover that electrical nerve stimulation can help aid the recovery from spinal cord injuries. That's the good news. Howdy, we're done. We nailed it.